<clears throat> Thank you for being part of our study, our series that we have, uh, lecture number 19. We are now doing Moment of Inertia. We're going to be covering um, how to find the moment of inertia, what is the difference, finding it for the X component and finding it for the Y component. Okay, the moment of inertia is an object resistance to change in its rotational rate. And as you can see here, you can see here we have our distance and we have our application being used. Moment of inertia about an axis for a point mass is I equals mass and the distance squared. So this is our distance. This is our mass. This is what our inertia is. So basically, if you have the mass, three kilograms, and you have the distance from that mass, the force, you see here that the moment of inertia that we're going to have acted on this object <coughs> is 0.12 kilograms meters squared. Now, we are interested in, notice what we were saying, that distance there is very important. Now, if we look at this as a point mass, it's often not practical because we're dealing with big objects. <clears throat> we're not dealing with a little small point. The moment of inertia, we have to use, we have to use integration. And so the integration that we'll be using is the moment of inertia times is the integral of the distance squared, which we have here, and the D mass. And also, we will also have it F also, we can also do mass, the, the differential of the mass will be the rho times the differential of the volume, of the volume of our specific item. <clears throat> the moment of inertia about the x, x axis is denoted by I of x. <clears throat> Notice what we have here is I of x is equal to the integral. Or we said the triple integral of dx, the distance of in reference to x, squared dm, which is equal to the integral of not x, but just y squared plus z squared, that quantity times rho times dv. Okay? Now note that the moment of inertia of x is not equal to the <coughs> x squared dm, but it is equal to everything but the x squared, okay, which would be y squared plus z squared. To try to remember that, please. Please, please, please try to remember that the subscript tells you which variables are not with the D squared in the moment of inertia. So let's do an example. We have this square here with a density of 1. We have this square box. It goes on the x-axis from 0 to a, and on the y-axis, some 0 to A. And you will also find this in your book, problem number 5 on page 256. So what we're interested in is finding the moment of inertia 
about a side, okay, about an axis through a corner. These are our corners. This is our side. And perpendicular to the plane of, I'm going to try to pronounce that, la lamina. Okay, and that does not have a what? A Z dimension. And we also want to find it for a diagonal, <coughs> which we will do each one of these as an example. Okay, so we first start off with our M is equal to what? Our DX, the um, double integral for the DX and the DY. We don't have DZ because it's, for this particular object there, Z is zero. And this equals to A squared, okay? Now, what is our moment of inertia? Now that we found the mass, what is the moment of inertia? Our moment of inertia, we have to take dy dx, and we're using what? y squared. Y, where is z squared? Well, z squared is not in because there is no z component. Okay, so there's just y squared, no z squared. Okay, so the next step that we take here is y squared dy. That's going to give us one-third y cubed. And we're going from a to zero. And then we're going to have dx. And so we substitute the a for the y into a because the zero, the lower limit, will drop out. We have one-third A cubed. And since the A and the one-third are both constants, it goes outside, and then we have the DX. And that's just going to be X times one-third A cubed. And we're going to take that from the limit from zero to A. So we have our one-third A cubed. Then we plug in our A because the lower limit drops out. Then we have one-third A to the fourth equal to one-third a squared m equals our moment of inertia <clears throat> now let's remember this let's remember this because we're going to be able to use when we see m later we're going to have everything in reference to a squared so whenever we find an a squared or a fourth we're going to be able to replace it with m so as you saw here, we had, what, a to the fourth, and one of them is equal to m, so we're just going to say a squared m equals the moment of inertia for the x-axis. And so by symmetry, because this is perfect symmetry, we know that the x, the moment of inertia on the x is going to equal to the moment of the inertia is the same. One third A squared times M. Okay, so now we'd like to look at, um, we're going to find it, we did it um, for the side and <clears throat> an axis to a corner and perpendicular to the plane and a diagonal. Okay, let's look at this. Let's <clears throat> see what IZ is. Remember IZ, you don't use the IZ, you have to use, you don't use the Z component, you use the X squared plus the Y squared, dy dx. And so we have it going again from zero to A. And we're gonna do the um, dy first. Okay, but we have the x squared, and then we have the y squared times dy dx. So, 
If we look at this closely, we will see that, what is this? This here, as we mentioned earlier, is the inertia for what? X and for Y. So we have the two components here, which equals one third of A squared M, which we already saw, and plus one third M A squared. Okay? And this is equal to two thirds A squared M. <clears throat> so now we found inertia for what? For Z. The moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia is double the X and the Y. Moments of inertia. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a corner, right? We're looking at a corner. Okay, and we're looking at what's this? This is now a perpendicular. And the last one we did also, what we've been doing was the sides. Okay, because we went from 0 to A and from 0 to A for the X and for the Y. So we have done the sides. We said we were going to do a perpendicular, and we said we were going to do a diagonal. So as you can see that this is what? Perpendicular. Also, you was able to see that we did a Z, which was perpendicular to the X and the Y. Okay, so these here is our particular vector that we have. Okay, this vector u and v, which has the x and y component. And we're going to use the u and the v and before we continue on this particular one, let's take a break so that you can think about what we have and we're going to go through this example because it's going to take a little while for us to go through this example. So we want to give you a break at this point and we'll come back to solving this problem. Thank you.